I welcome you all to the session of applied thermal engineering and the topic of our today's discussion is the multifluid cycle and its analysis. So, if we try to recall in this module of this course, we have discussed about steam power cycles starting with the Carnot cycle, we have discussed several other cycles which are used in real applications. Importantly, in all these cycles, we have seen that the working fluid is water or steam. So, we have identified that there are two parts in the cycle, one is the high temperature part, another is the low temperature part and the working fluid which changes its phase from the low temperature part to the high temperature part. Now, in the last class we have discussed about the desirable properties of the working fluid which will be used in the steam power cycle. And we have seen rather we have discussed though water is predominantly used as the working fluid, but it is not considered as the ideal fluid. In fact, water has a few drawbacks and if we need to consider water as the ideal working fluid, all these shortcomings need to be eliminated and one way of doing rather considering this aspect is the use of binary cycle or the combined fluid cycle. So, the necessity of the combined cycle arises from the fact that we would like to use water as the working substance or working fluid despite knowing its a few drawbacks, but our objective should be to eliminate all these drawbacks and in doing so we need to consider the multifluid cycle or the binary cycle. So, now if we try to write down the desirable properties of the working fluid. Number one is uh, just I am writing high critical temperature at a reasonably low pressure. Number two is low triple point temperature. That is the freezing temperature should be below the you know room temperature, low triple, triple point temperature. And then high enthalpy of you know vaporization or high heat of vaporization. Okay. And finally, it should not have low conden you know condensation pressure, rather vapor pressure should be relatively you know uh, closer to the rather nearly closer to the uh, closer to the atmospheric at a desirable condensation temperature. So, I am writing 
this is high heat of vaporization. The meaning of this particular is, I mean what is the meaning of this? We should look at this particular property, if it is, if we can ensure then mass or you know weight of the fluid in the cycle will be minimum. So, low condenser pressure is not allowed. is not allowed. In addition to this, we had discussed that it should be non-corrosive, chemically stable, easily available and also uh, what I am telling non-toxic. Okay. One most important in addition to these properties most important which should be discussed today is that it should have ability to wet the surface of the you know uh, metal. So, metal surface. to increase heat transfer. Now, why I am discussing this uh, part again today? High critical temperature at a reasonable low pressure, it is very important. It is very difficult to have all these properties in water. You know that uh, if we try to recall that in steam, when we are getting steam in the boiler, rise in steam, rise in temperature of steam is accompanied with the rise in pressure. So, we have seen that you know at a critical temperature, uh, if it is if we consider steam, so you know. Uh, pressure is very high. So, if I focus on this particular point, then we can write that. So, this is very important that means, we should look for the working fluid which will be having high critical temperature at a reasonably low pressure. So, that means, we can increase the temperature without increasing the pressure. As I told you for steam rise in temperature is accompanied with a rise in pressure for you know at, at critical temperature. So, I am writing for steam critical temperature Uh, steam water mixture if we use as the working fluid critical temperature 374 degree Celsius you know pressure is two twenty five bar. So, try to understand if we use water as the working fluid and when that water is getting converted into steam in the boiler, even at the critical temperature pressure is very high. So, if pressure is very high then we also need to look at three different issues. One is design, operation and control. So, to withstand that high pressure design of the device in which this conversion or steam will be generated its operation as well as control will be an issue. So, these three important issues like design, operation and control are the factors for which we should look for a fluid which will be having high critical temperature at a reasonably low pressure. Right? 
low triple point temperature I you know I mean, I mean what is what is the why you need to have high critical temperature because if we increase the high critical temperature that that means the maximum temperature at which heat would be transferred I mean when it would be very high and uh, the maximum temperature at which heat will be transferred from the you know from from the combust from the from the combustion will be getting energy that energy should be transferred to the working fluid and now if the critical temperature is very high then we, it is highly possible to have you know a uh, phase change when working fluid will be changing its phase that process can be maintained even at a high temperature so we are trying we shall be trying to mimic or closer to the carnot cycle low triple point temperature so basically i have mentioned if that is the case then uh, freezing temperature uh, i mean freezing temperature should be well below the atmospheric temperature so that is that is what is ensured and high heat of vaporization i had i have already told that i it it it, it ensure that it it will ensure that the working i mean you know weight of the working fluid should be minimum and finally low condenser pressure is not allowed that we have discussed in the previous in the previous class so question is you know you know if we use water as the working fluid it is very unlikely to have all these properties at a time and that is how despite the fact that we will not be getting all these properties in water we need to use water because it is used predominantly because of its because of its a few advantageous feature but if you'd like to use it essentially to increase the efficiency of the plant we need to go for the binary cycle so the concept of binary cycle is coming from this particular fact now let us look uh, into this aspect if we consider this is boiler this is turbine this is pump so this is 1 2 3 4 turbine this is condenser so this is q out w out this is q in this is w in so try to understand you know that uh, so essentially we can write this so this 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 cycle is this is a i mean all the processes are executed in a cyclic manner and if we can consider the equivalent form of this cyclic processes like this so this is qh that is th tl ql and w net that is what we have learned in our basic thermodynamic uh, thermodynamics course so you know that uh, if we try to f know understand that w out minus w in that is the network that we are getting from the cyclic process so if we, what I, what i have try what i am trying i am trying to represent the all these processes through this uh, heat engine so essentially this is the engine which is operating between two temperature thermal reservoirs one is at high temperature another is at low temperature and we are getting continuous work output so essentially this 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 is this is the representation or you know a very uh, simplest form of this uh, uh, system so what we know from the efficiency that thermal efficiency of this 
T L and this is T H. So, this is the thermal efficiency of this cycle which we can if we look at this heat engine we can see that efficiency will increase it will be T L minus T H. So, W net by Q in. So, we are writing W net by Q in. So, that is Q H. So, that is what we can write is Q H minus Q L divided by Q H 1 minus Q L by Q H. Right? So, W net plus Q L is equal to Q H. So, W net is equal to Q H minus Q L. So, we can write this for the reversible cycle and what we can see that if we increase the temperature this fellow. So, if we try to write it using this color. So, if we try to increase this fellow. So, that means temperature at which heat is added should be maximum. Also, this temperature temperature of sink to which heat is rejected. This also should be minimum. So, either by reducing T L or by increasing T H, we can ensure that the efficiency of the cycle will be maximum. Now, question is if we go back to the previous slide, rather if we just look at the uh, simple form of this steam power cycle and its equivalent representation that is shown over here. Our objective should be the amount the T H should be maximum. So, the maximum temperature I mean the temperature at which heat is added to the working fluid should be maximum. That means, and the temperature at which heat is rejected that also should be minimum. This is not uh, always possible to reduce temperature because it is dictated by the temperature of the coolant which is available near the plant. So, what we can do? We can try our best to keep the stage as maximum as possible and if you would like to do it, if you would like to do so, then what I wrote over here is that high critical temperature at a reasonably low pressure. So, that means, the working fluid should be chosen in such a way that the critical temperature should be very high. So, that we can increase the maximum temperature at which the substance will change its phase will be high. So, that the you know latent heat transfer or phase change heat transfer will be um, it is more efficient. So, so I mean we can achieve high thermal efficiency. Problem with water is that as I told you a rise in temperature is accompanied with a rise in pressure and that eventually creates problem from the perspective of the design operation as well as control of the plant. So, that is why water alone cannot be used as the working fluid if we need to have or achieve high thermal efficiency and it is because of this reason the concept of binary or the combined fluid cycle is there. Okay. So, if I go to the combined uh, fluid or binary vapor cycle, combined fluid 
or binary fluid cycle. Okay. So, you know that uh, different working fluids are having different attractive features, but not all of I mean if we consider water and other oil. So, all these fluids are having different attractive feature in them, but not all. So, the properties or attractive feature water is having those features are absent in oil. In a similar way the attractive features uh, oil is having may be those features are absent when if we look when we look at water as the working fluid. So, this is very important and in such a case two vapor cycles operating on you know two fluids are put together. So, two vapor cycles operating on two working fluid are put together right one is one is at high temperature and another is at low temperature. So, that means our objective is to get the attractive features of two different fluids rather our, our aim should be to achieve or to attain attractive features of two different working fluids and if you would like to get those we need to consider two vapor cycles each of them will be operating on each working fluid and if we combine them together one will be at a high temperature one or another is at a low temperature and this total arrangement and this total arrangement is known as arrangement is known as the combined fluid cycle. Question is water will be used as one working fluid definitely for the low temperature part of the cycle. I mean there are two different cycles water will be used as the working fluid for the low temperature cycle while we also need to select another fluid which will be used as the working fluid for the high temperature part of the cycle. Now, next question is question is which fluid should be selected to act as the working fluid for the high temperature part of the cycle. In this context it is seen that mercury is used as the working fluid for the high temperature part of the cycle or high temperature cycle not part high temperature cycle. See I mean although mercury does not have all the desirable properties which you have talked about in in the beginning of today's class yet mercury it is used because of it 
a few distinctive features we shall discuss all those. So, the combined cycle that we are going to discuss today is known as mercury water combined cycle. So, if we go to the next slide, so we shall be discussing about mercury water combined vapor cycles. Okay. So, let us draw the schematic depiction that will help us to understand very quickly. Uh, if I draw it, there are two different part, one is this is the So, this is H g cycle and this is high temperature part and so this is you know it is connected to electric generator. So, this is electric generator. So, this is turbine. Okay. So, this is mercury generator. So, this is mercury generator. So, you can understand we need to supply heat in this mercury. Another part of the cycle that I am going to draw now is the so basically you know this is combined fluid cycle till now we have drawn only the mercury cycle so remaining another low temperature cycle is the water cycle water or steam water cycle so if we write so say we are supplying water and that water is getting converted into steam and that steam will be collected will be allowed to pass through the superheater and that will be taken to another turbine from there we will be getting w out so this is turbine right and after doing work that steam will be collected in a condenser this is as usual. So, here heat will be rejected and the collected condenser will be pumped back to the you know this is called steam generator. So, this is steam generator and this is pump 2. So, you can understand and this is water cycle or steam cycle. This is steam turbine and if I write this is mercury turbine. Okay. So, this is also you know that we are calling it. 
So, it is very easy to understand there are two different cycles, two different fluids are used. Objective is to increase the efficiency of this cycle. What is done? Heat is supplied to this mercury because mercury is having high critical temperature at a reasonably low pressure. Mercury is having high critical temperature at a reasonably low pressure. So, we can increase the critical temperature and the isothermal heat transfer from the from this external source to mercury is very you know high and what will happen you know that mercury vapor will be allowed to go through the mercury turbine. It will this turbine is connected to this generator. Now, after doing some work that my mercury should be again collected in this device which we have given name as the steam generator, I also can call it mercury condenser. That means, here mercury is allowed to reduce its temperature by supplying water and that water will be converted into steam. That steam is taken through superheater. So, this is superheater, this is superheater. We shall discuss this is for the timing you keep in mind that this is again a device through which steam is allowed to pass essentially to increase the its temperature before it enters into the boiler into the turbine. So, you know that uh, whatever steam is generated in this steam generator is in contact with the water. So, essentially the steam that we are getting is saturated steam. So, to increase the quality of the steam rather we, we, we need to you know superheat and that is why it is passed to superheater. This is what I have schemat schematically shown. We shall discuss this part again when we shall be discussing about boiler and that superheated steam is taken to the steam turbine and it does work and we are getting W out and after doing work it steam is collected in condenser wherein it reject heat Q out and that condensate is pumped back to the steam generator. In this way you can understand so, this is also a cyclic process and the process that is there in this cycle is also cyclic, all the processes are cyclic, I mean executed in this cyclic manner. Idea is what we can get out of it. So, you know that again if we try to represent the entire system equivalent form should be like this. So, equivalent representation of this complex circuit is this what we can understand? We are supplying heat from a heat source which is now having temperature T h and eventually heat is rejected in another reservoir that is heat sink which is having temperature T l and at it is out of this you know heat x heat uh, transfer to the device and from where it is rejected we are getting W net. So, net work we are getting and that is in a cyclic uh, manner. What we can do? Had this you know cycle not been here, I mean if you if only if we consider only the uh, low temperature part of low temperature cycle that means if we do not consider this high temperature cycle, I mean if the high temperature cycle is not integrated with this low temperature cycle, then we had seen from our previous classes that T h should be maintained at a limit. We cannot increase T h beyond a particular limit and that is the critical temperature of water and we had seen that critical temperature even at critical temperature pressure is very high. And we even cannot even for the supercritical uh, you know 
uh, uh, boiler or supercritical plant. The design, operation and meant a control is a control, these three aspects are you know very difficult. So, what we can see by dragging this particular cycle to the lower temperature cycle or by integrating I can say integrating this high temperature cycle with this low temperature cycle, high temperature cycle working fluid is different. We are going to get, we are going to achieve or we are going to exploit a few distinctive features of mercury. So, that what we can do we can we can maintain T h as high as possible as maximum as possible. So, that the overall efficiency of the cycle can be increased. So, this is the concept of binary cycle you know. So, what is the you know idea? Idea is if we use water alone as the working fluid, we cannot increase T h beyond a particular limit. If we cannot increase the limit, then we cannot increase thermal efficiency beyond a particular value. But we need to use water because it is predominantly used and also it is having a few distinctive features and it is because of this you know properties water is used. So, we are keeping the provision of using water in one part of the cycle where temperature is less, but at the same time we need to have high thermal efficiency that is why this high temperature cycle is added. So, these two cycles are you know uh, added and as a result of this the efficiency of the plant will increase. Question is it is basically you know that uh, we can use because mercury though mercury does not have all these desirable properties, but we we, we, we are using. So, definitely this fluid is having a few uh, advantageous features that is why it is used, but we also need to keep uh, in mind that mercury use of mercury is not you know very easy. So, we shall discuss uh, the merits and demerits of this particular fluid which is used in this high temperature cycle. Before going to conclude, if you would like to draw the T s diagram, because uh, we also need to know the analysis part, our entire objective to see or look at the efficiency of the plant. So, we need to you know have the analytical expression of the thermal efficiency and from there we shall see that integrate integration of this particular cycle to the uh, steam water cycle improves the efficiency and that we will see from that particular analytical expression. But before completing I would like to draw the T s diagram. So, if we try to draw the T s diagram So, this is if I draw the low temperature part. So, this is and we have another uh, You can understand the critical temperature of mercury is very high. So, this yellow color is used to represent the T s diagram of the mercury cycle. So, you know that
if we give name, so this is P 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is one, two, three, four. And if we give name here that is five, six, seven and this is 8. So, we can write this is 5, this is 6, this is 7, this is 8. So, what we can see from the test diagram is that this is low temperature cycle, this is high temperature cycle. So, this is water steam and this is mercury. What we can see that heat which is rejected during condensation of mercury in the mercury condenser which is also known as steam generator for this particular cycle that is low temperature cycle that heat is gained by the water and gaining or getting this heat from the condensed mercury water is converted into steam and that steam is used to rather is allowed to pass through the turbine and it, it, it does work from where we are getting work output. So, this is the overall concept of the combined and binary uh, fluid cycle. Idea is that by using one such fluid, we can use maximum temperature at which it is added. So, this is T H. If we can increase overall efficiency, you can see that overall efficiency will be thermal will be equal to 1 minus T L by T H. So, T L we cannot have you know very precise control over T L because that is fixed by the temperature at which you know uh, heat is rejected to the sink and that is that is that is you know basically that that depends on the temperature of coolant which is available uh, near the plant. But what we can do we can increase T H and to do so we have discussed about this combined fluid cycle. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our you know uh, next topic in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.